uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, hope you are where, if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushgrin. Today, we are going to be talking about a lot of different things, namely, we're going to talk about clearing out these solo campers that are so prevalent right now in, say, Midstein, Pachinki, you know who I'm talking about, you know what's up, baby, we're going to talk about uh, good team play, hit point trading, doing your job there, we're going to talk about uh, revive etiquette, all kinds of different things, we're going to be talking about late rotations on zones, if you don't know what those things are, you want to get better at PUBG Mobile, well, stick around. You know, this is what we're here for. And if you do like that kind of content and you're not subscribed, why not? Click the button now, subscribe, hit the little bell, go away a winner. This is uh, a squad that has dropped into Pachinki. We saw them drop with us and we cleared a couple of members of this squad and there's like... Just everyone else is in their own building being a, a real pain in the ass. You can see that bloke there. He was in the yellow house and we're about to jump on top of originally. And we cleared him out of that. And he went to the back of the yellow house and then he went to here. Now, the thing about this is if you're going to be pushing these guys, they're going to be third-party beacon corners like that. What you really want to be doing here is making sure that at all times, and I, I can't be... I can't be emphasize this enough. At all times, you want to have your teammate on your shoulder. Maybe if I had an aim there before I started just hip firing, that guy would have been dead. We wouldn't have to push in after him anyway, but we do. Because um, he was just like adjusting his inventory. Mr. Weedra and I have been playing together for a long time. Anyone that's watched the channel or the live streams would know that this is the case. It's not like a, a surprise. The real thing that we do a lot of is push together. You'll hear me off on when I'm doing live streams. On your shoulder, on your shoulder, on your shoulder, on your shoulder. Um, and what that basically means is that like I'm right next to you. Uh, we have 200 hit points together and a whole lot of armor to get through and we've got two guns. So if you push together, even if someone comes out, we can clear that target. Uh, now, this is a perfect example of that. There's a bloke over there. We're going to push together. He uh, is... There's like two people here. This is the obviously the end of the, the whole enchilada. This is the final circle. So we get one of them and the last guy's up here in the house. He's going to jump out and he's going to hit Mr. Ouija. Mr. Ouija just hit him and he's like... He's low, he's low, he's low, he's low. He's low, he's low. Hit him before he heals. Hit him before he heals. And that's all we got to do. Because Az has already taken 75% of his health. And that is called hit point trading. If you have 200 hit points and they get 100 and you can lose 100 hit points out of your duo and take 80 off him, then the math is brilliant. It works absolutely in your favor. Now, we talked about these people that have been really hard to pull out of areas like Midstone or Pachinki. The way you can really get screwed by this is if you rotate late. Now, I've done this. We've all done this where you've been looking and looking and looking and there's someone that just won't engage you. They just won't take the fight. So what you can do and what a lot of people do, myself included, is when they've got to be in their bonnet about it, they'll rotate super late out. They'll get lots and lots of meds and then they'll just sit there and wait for this person to rotate. They know they're there somewhere. They're certain they've got to come through this area to get to the circle. So you eventually clear them. Now, this is true, right? This will work. You will be able to do it. You will clear this target. The problem with this kind of gameplay getting caught up in the individual matchups, which I do all the time. This is why I want to talk to you about this. Like wanting to clear that guy so desperately that I got screwed on the rotation here, is you end up rotating into these final circle areas so late that all it takes is, you know, one bad bit of luck, like running into a, a fight that's already going on. And it doesn't matter what you do, you are absolutely behind the eight ball. And you'll generally get cleared by someone who's done their work, rotated early, and is sitting inside the circle, uh, just ready to thump you. And that's exactly what's happening here. There's nothing I can do about this. I, I've waited so long to get that bloke coming out of Midstein that I'm running in in front of a guy who just shreds me. This is unfortunate, but this is something that really does happen a lot to me because I get upset. Watch this. This is... Shots you shouldn't take. Absolutely. Someone over there just shot at me once. Now, this is a hot drop, right? That guy has no vest. He has no helmet. He has no gear. And he has hot dropped next to us where it has the end of Del Patron. And then he's fired like a single Uzi round or VSS round at me from over there. And he's now going to get absolutely thumped. Because 
You know how we talk about pushing together and hit point trading? We've looted Hacienda Del Patron. There's four of us. There's two guys, three guys in there. And they can't have much stuff. Like, they just can't have much gear. And we are all geared up already. Uh, there's still 90 people in the match, 91 people in the match. And yet, there's no way. There's no way this is going to win well. <laughs> They're on fire. <laughs> like, this is just terrible. Sometimes you have to look at these situations and you just leave. You just have to leave. Like, you, you, you drop, you don't have the right gear, and one of your teammates starts firing at the fully looted squad on top of the mid-base radar tower. Like, just get out of there. Don't take that engagement. Now we're going to have a look at some late-game stuff. This is Mr. Weeder and I. or well, not late-game stuff. This is mid-game stuff. But this is what happens so often on, on Lytic when you're rotating. Um, you run into squads that are in structures and you have a gunfight and then everyone else turns up and it happens all the time outside of midstein where these you know these the ruins and everything are it, it, this happens constantly right and you're gonna see some really interesting gameplay between Ouija and i here we're feeling pretty comfortable uh we're just pushing through squads and then we hear someone behind us right and that's a it's a bot but all this noise brings in real people obviously this is what happens on Livic, uh especially because the map is a small scale map and because there are so many valleys and berms it's like sanok without all the grass and trees like there's still trees and grass but not the, to, to the degree that sanok has those things and this means that you end up in just these god-awful situations where you've got a squad yeah, there you go so someone up there is has turned up and we thought that was a bot might well have been a real person one of their mates have turned up and started grenading uh down here so we're going to push back into that because we want to get good and and then oh suddenly <laughs> uh okay right well this just got a lot less fun there are now people up here there's people over there oh and now someone there over there as well so i got knocked and i'm behind a tree now, this is where most people would panic, okay? Uh, but you really have to treat this like... Imagine that every problem is just like a flag that's popped up, and you've got to knock all these flags down one at a time. Mr. Weegers got to clear the target over there that was firing at me. That's what he does. And then he's going to get smoke on me. That's what he does. And then he's going to get the revive. No, can't do that, so we've got to wait. Got to wait, Okay. I'm going to stay at the tree. He's going to take another few shots at them. Get some action going on. He's going to get the revive going on. But you have to treat this kind of gameplay as what can you do? Not like what, what needs to be done, but physically what can you do? Because what will generally happen there is... And I do it all the time. I'll be like, oh, I've got the revive, I've got the revive. And we're just like, dude, go away. <laughs> Like, you're just going to die here? How about you just win the game for us? And this is something you will come to understand as things go on. Like, And these guys are now throwing grins at us. And you might have heard that was a gunshot from down on the right, the northwestern corner of the map. And we get another knock. And we're just slowly building up here. And then we're actually going to move very, very aggressively towards them. Now, the reason for this is... When you are stuck in a third-party situation like this, uh, if you can uh, get to another squad and actually turn... Think about it like this. this. If there's anyone behind us, and I can get up here under the rock face behind these houses, they're actually going to shoot at the guys above me if they poke. So they're probably getting hit from well behind now uh, every time they poke up over the top. And that means that I'm kind of in this no-man's land where I can actually work some magic and push in here yep great 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 don't get greedy like there's someone else on the hill over there shooting at azar just don't get greedy you can get absolutely screwed here if you get too greedy that's a bot no not the guys we were worried about if you push up like i would love to push up here and clear everyone but just just duck got a knock don't want to get hit from behind there you go the guys from behind are shooting at me again Get down off there. Let him shoot at the other people. Move around. Bugger off bot. Don't get greedy. 
Wait until there's an opportunity and then work on up. Now, as is going to run into a guy over here that's going to hit him from behind. That's the guys we were talking about before. Get a smoke on him. I can't start this revive yet. There we go. So we've smoked up there and that's actually worked out really well for us. That wasn't intentional, but it's probably making everyone think that that's where we're reviving. And then we get the revive and just get behind the rock and live to fight another day. Now you can see we still aren't safe from the other direction. That's what we're really worried about. I've got no helmet. My vest is absolutely rotten and screwed. And there are people in mid -stein now that we've got to worry about as well as the guys in the back there. There they go. Now I'm like, Azza, get in the car. Let's go. Just leave. We're going. We're leaving. We're leaving. We're leaving. We're leaving. We've got no health. Mr. Weezy just took another hit in the foot. Get down here. Get safe. Move on with life. Did we end up winning this game? Absolutely we did. And it was really just because Azza and I managed to grind our way through some really, really tough gameplay without biting off more than we could chew. Just doing what we could when we could. And they're the best, most fun kind of games because they're the ones you don't expect to do anything with. And it's great to be able to pull it out against all the odds. Remember, just do what you can do. Don't try and do what you want to do. Just do what you can do. Knock over the problems one at a time and you'll actually be surprised at how many situations you can grind your way out of. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, thank you very much for just being part of the community. Look after yourselves and as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.